this lecture we are going to discuss about the fibrinolytic drugs so in this chapter i have already discussed about the antiplatelet drugs, drugs anticoagulants and this is the last lecture uh, that is about the fibrinolytic drugs now what are the, what is the role of fibrinolytic therapy so fibrinolytic therapy is used used in, in cases of acute myocardial infarction in cases of acute ischemic stroke acute ischemic stroke and also for massive pulmonary embolism that i have already told you basically they degrade the thrombus so in all these acute cases we can use fibrinolytic agents it can also be used in cases of peripheral arterial diseases or proximal dvt as catheter directed therapy as catheter directed therapy not as systemic therapy they can be used as catheter directed therapy now coming to the mechanism of action before that you all must be knowing uh, the normal uh, physiological function so plasminogen activators they will cause activation of plasminogen to plasmin and this plasmin will cause degradation of fibrin into de uh, fibrin degradation products now there are two regulators one is PAI1 that is plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 and alpha alpha 2 antiplasmin PAI1 blocks the activation of the plasminogen to plasmin and alpha 2 antiplasmin blocks activation of fibrin to fibrin degradation products now the drugs that we have as a fibrinolytic agent these includes streptokinase then there is a acylated plasminogen streptokinase activator complex that is known as any streptage any streptage then we have urokinase we have urokinase then we have recombinant tissue plasminogen activators so recombinant tissue plasminogen activator that is known as the alteplage and there are certain derivatives of recombinant tissue plasminogen activator those are those are tenecteplase and retiplase and retiplase now all of them will cause activation of plasminogen okay so all of them they will cause activation of plasminogen activation of plasminogen to plasmin for the mechanism how they convert it is different but all of them will cause activation of plasminogen to plasmin i will study the individual drugs let's start with streptokinase now streptokinase unlike the tissue plasminogen activators it doesn't directly convert plasminogen to plasmin okay so it doesn't does not directly convert plasminogen to plasmin the mechanism is shown in this image you can see here this streptokinase it is binding to the plasminogen and it is forming a complex so it will form one is to one stoichiometric complex stoichiometric complex with plasminogen once this complex is formed once this complex is formed there will be conformational change in the plasminogen that exposes its active site so as you can see here there is a conformational change in the plasminogen which is exposing its active site okay and now this complex now this complex serves as activator of additional plasminogen so after forming this stoichiometry complex it will cause conformational change that will activate the plasminogen to convert into plasmin okay now remember streptokinase is fibrin non specific fibrin non specific means it doesn't act only near the thrombus but it will cause a but it will cause a degradation of circulating fibrin also okay so fibrin is present near the thrombus and fibrin is also present in the circulation streptokinase is not specific to uh, 
like uh, it's not specific to the fibrin which is uh, which is present near the thrombus but it is also it will also act upon the fibrin which is circulating in the blood so it is fibrin non specific so it will produce a systemic it will produce a systemic thrombolytic state it will produce a systemic thrombolytic state that is the reason it is associated with higher bleeding tendencies okay. it is used in acute myocardial infarction and the dose is 1.5 million units given over 1 hr 1.5 million units over 1 hr patients may develop antibodies against it okay it is immunogenic so antibodies may develop antibodies may develop with use of streptokinase also if the patient is if the patient is previously having a, a streptococcal infection streptococcal infection then also the patient may have antibodies against streptokinase now these antibodies actually will reduce the effectiveness effectiveness of streptokinase effectiveness of streptokinase now around 5% of patients may develop allergic reaction will de develop allergic reaction and rarely rarely anaphylaxis also anaphylaxis also they may produce transient hypotension transient hypotension and this transient hypotension will respond to leg elevation leg elevation or iv fluids or may sometimes require low dose inotropes low dose inotropes like dopamine like norad etc so if you manage uh, cases of myocardial infarction you must have experienced uh, many times that after uh, giving the thrombolysis after using the streptokinase the patients will uh, patients will develop hypotension many times we uh, wrongly take it as a clip class 4 mi but uh, this is just uh, transient hypotension due to streptokinase which is a benign condition so coming to the next drug that is anisteprilase anisteprilase means it is it also has streptokinase in it so it is a combination of streptokinase plus equimolar amount of lis plasminogen equimolar amounts of lis plasminogen and uh, i have told that once streptokinase Uh, lis plasminogen is a plasminogen derivative okay so once streptokinase is attached to plasminogen it will it will uh, it will cause change uh, it will cause a conformational change uh, in the plasminogen it will cause conformational change in the plasminogen leading to its activation okay so if you see this image here i told once streptokinase is bound to this plasminogen it will cause conformational change and it will cause exposure of the active site exposure of active site so in this combination there is streptokinase plus plasminogen so there also will be exposure of active site exposure of active site this active active site is blocked by an isoil group an isoil group Okay, so this active site in this complex is blocked by an isoil group. Okay, and once you give this drug, once you give this drug, usually this is given as single bolus, single bolus. Once you give this drug inside the body, inside the body, this an isoil group will be removed. The an isoil group, this is removed inside the body or uh, degraded, and then. this streptokinase plasminogen complex they can do its function they can do its function the advantage of anisteprilase over streptokinase is it can be given as single bolus half life is around 100 minutes it's around 100 minutes rest of the things are similar to what we have discussed for streptokinase that means antibodies may form and uh, uh, it can also produce some allergic reactions and the transient hypotension is also possible because uh, streptokinase component is also present in anisteprilase 
Randomized studies have not shown any any benefit of any streptokinase over streptokinase. That's why it is not used, and also it is more effective. Uh, sorry, uh, it is more costly, so it is not used. No additional benefit, but it is more costly. That's why in uh, current practice it is not used. Now coming to urokinase. Urokinase is a two-chain serine protein derived from cultured fetal kidney cells. Okay, so it is derived from cultured fetal kidney cells. Remember, it is not immunogenic or allergic. Not immunogenic or allergic. This is also fibrin non non selective, non specific. So it will also produce a systemic lytic state, systemic lytic state. Can be used. It was used as uh, for the cases of catheter directed thrombolysis, catheter directed thrombolysis for DVT proximal DVT or PAD. It was used. However, uh, because of the production problems, it is not used now. It is not used now. Similar to any stapler, it is also not used now because of production problem. So the only drug that you have to remember in detail is about streptokinase. Now these these drugs, whatever you have discussed, these are all uh, fibrin non-selective. Now we'll come to the drugs, the tissue plasminogen activator groups. Okay, so these are TPO or so TPA, tissue plasminogen activators. Now they they are somewhat fibrin selective. Now these are the th three drugs. The first one is the alteplase, second one is the tenecteplase, and third one is the retiplase. Now you can see the structural differences between three uh, these three drugs. The retiplase has five domains. It has five domains. F is the finger domain. F is the finger domain. It is written here. Then EGF is the epidermal growth factor domain. Then the first and second Kringles K1 and K2. Then P is the protease domain. Okay. And remember this finger domain is important. This domain is important. And this will bind to the plasminogen. This will bind to the plasminogen. And the K1 also will bind to plasminogen. But the most important one is the finger domain. Okay. So the binding to plasminogen, binding to plasminogen is through the finger domain, which is the major uh, domain, and also to a uh, certain extent by the first. Kringle domain, where the first, sorry, the second Kringle domain, not the first. The second Kringle domain. Okay. Retiplase is fibrin selective, but not as selective as tenecteplase and retiplase. So it is not very selective for fibrin as it was previously thought of. Though definitely it is more selective than the streptokinase, but it is not that selective compared to tenecteplase and retiplase. Tenecteplase and retiplase they are more fibrin selective. They are more fibrin selective. Retiplase is also used in cases of acute MI. In cases of acute MI, at a dose of 100 mg over. 60 minutes, 100 mg over 60 minutes. It has shown benefits in patients with in patients with less than 75 years of age uh, with anterior MI, with anterior MI who presented within six hours of test pen or symptom onset. Okay, so this is the group of patients where multiplies has shown is its maximum benefit in acute MI cases. Now, if you compare this, uh, the structure of tenecteplase to retiplase, sorry, to alteplase, you can realize that this also has five domains, but it has an additional tetraalanine component, tetraalanine residue over the protease domain. So, P is the protease domain. Remember, plasminogen activator inhibitor, plasminogen activator inhibitor, this will, this will bind to this protease domain and it can cause cleavage of this. Uh, cleavage of this 
alteplage. Okay, it can degrade the alteplage. But in case of tenecteplase, this plasminogen activator inhibitor cannot bind to the protease domain. It cannot bind to the protease domain because of this tetraalanine group. That's why tenecteplase has a longer duration of action. It is a longer half life, longer duration of action. Apart from that, there is one more difference. You can see there is a glycosylation point here in the alteplase. That glycosylation point is changed to another place in the in the tenecteplase. So there are two basic differences. The glycosylation site or the Y on K1 has been repositioned in tenecteplase to endow it with a longer half-life. In addition, tetraalanine substitution in the protease domain renders tenecteplase resistant to type 1 plasminogen activator inhibitor. Okay, so these are the two modifications that they have done in the alteplase structure so that the half-life and the activity of tenecteplase will increase. Okay, remember tenecteplase is more is more fibrin selective. It is more fibrin selective. It is given as a single IV bolus. I told streptokinase is given as a infusion over one hour. I told alteplase is also given as a infusion over one hour. But tenecteplase is given as a single IV bolus. Okay, regarding the risk of bleeding. The risk of intracranial hemorrhage is similar to that of alteplase, similar to that of alteplase, but non-cerebral bleeds, non-cerebral bleeds are less in tenecteplase compared to alteplase. Okay. So this is that's why you ask which is the best drug among these three streptokinase, alteplase, and tenecteplase. Tenecteplase is the best drug for acute myocardial infarction. It can be given as a single IV bolosters. Now coming to the last one that is retiplase. Retiplase, it, it doesn't have the first three domains, it doesn't have the finger domain, EGF domain and the K1 domain. It has only K2 and P domain, second kringle and protease domain. Now because it doesn't have finger domain, finger domain is not there. That's why it is, it binds to, binds fibrin quickly. Binds to fibrin weakly compared to tenecteplase or alteplase. It is derived from E. coli. It is derived from E. coli. And it is not glycosylated. It is not, not glycosylated. You see the glycosylation domain is present on K1 in alteplase and tenecteplase. That is not there in cases case of retiplase. It has longer half life, of course. It also has a longer half life. It is given as two IV bolus, two IV bolus regimen, 30 minutes apart. But so streptokinase and alteplase given as infusion over one hour, tenecteplase single IV bolus, retiplase IV bolus, but two doses have has to be given 30 minutes apart. Studies have found that this is as effective as streptokinase, but it is not superior to alteplase or tenecteplase. Okay, it's not superior to alteplase or tenecteplase. So from this discussion, we, we understood that in cases of acute myocardial infection, the best thrombolytic therapy is either tenecteplase or retiplase. Either tenecteplase or retiplase. Tenecteplase is given as a single IV bolus, so it is more convenient. That's why the base drug has to be tenecteplase. So that's all about the fibrinolytic drugs.